are to the country's National Assembly. The new body has 15 days to form a new government, set a date for the next election, as well as draft a new constitution. Wednesday's ceremony, as we hear in the CFI report, marks the first peaceful transfer of power in Libya's modern history. Libya's National Transitional Council has handed over power to the country's newly elected National Assembly. The ceremony was held on Wednesday. The interim NTC, which was formed during the revolution last year and struggled to keep the country on track after the fall of Gaddafi, has now been dissolved. The National Transitional Council hands over constitutional authority to lead the state to the General National Assembly, which henceforth shall be regarded as the legitimate soul of the Libyan people. The Assembly has 15 days to appoint a government. It will also set the dates for the next elections and draft a new constitution. 80 seats of the 200-member Assembly are held by political parties the 120 remaining seats by independent candidates. The broadly secular National Forces Alliance holds a larger number of seats than any other group. The handover marks the first peaceful transition of power in the country's modern history. In Tripoli, an immense crowd filled Martyr Square to celebrate the event. It is a great feeling, and all Libyans share it. This is a joyful event. Today I have my revenge for the son I lost in the war against Gaddafi. I have given Libya my most precious possession, but I'm happy to be here in Martyr Square with all of Libya. Security was heavy in the capital, and for good reason. Much of the country is still dangerous. Since the fall of Gaddafi, armed militias have roamed the countryside, dispensing their own brands of justice. One of the government's first tasks will be to bring them to heel. Rights groups in Guinea are blaming the Guinean army for the death of civilians in the mining town of Zogota. The killings took place a few days after demonstrations by residents who accused a Brazilian mining company of refusing to employ the locals. Meanwhile, the Guinean government has opened a judicial inquiry into the case. These pictures have been going around the internet. Taken by several human rights groups, including Lawyers Without Borders in Guinea, they show civilians being killed. The perpetrators are believed to be soldiers in Zogota, a mining town in southeastern Guinea. Rights groups say these are crimes against humanity. The government of Guinea has opened a judicial investigation. The authors and instigators and all persons implicated, including those within the administrative authorities, will undergo the full vigors of the law. These events reportedly took place just a few days after a demonstration by residents of Zogota. During the protest, jobless youths injured Guinean soldiers. They also looted the premises of Vala, a Brazilian mining company based in Zogota. The youths accused the company of refusing to employ local residents. We oppose all forms of violence. That is our position. Because it is only through exchange and dialogue that understanding can be reached. A few days after the protest, a delegation made up of five ministers arrived in Zogota to evaluate the extent of the damage made to the Brazilian company. The government delegation is accused of having encouraged the Guinean army's tough intervention. At least three coalition soldiers have been killed in Afghanistan when two suicide bombers blew themselves in the midst of a NATO patrol and the wife of a shame high-profile Chinese politician today appeared in court for allegedly poisoning her British business partner. Gu Kai Lai faces death penalty if convicted. We have details of this and other stories in the CFI News Roundup. An Afghan civilian was also killed. The Taliban claimed responsibility for the attack, which occurred in the eastern Kunar province. Since January, 220 NATO troops have been killed. The United Nations reports a 15% rise in casualties over the last year. Many of the victims are women and children. These men are accused by Israel of having smuggled explosives into Lebanon to help Hezbollah. The 10 suspects, all Israeli Arabs, are charged with aiding the enemy in time of war. They will remain in police custody until trial, 
scheduled to begin at the end of the month. The trial of Gu Kai Lai, the wife of Bo Zilai, a high-profile member of China's Communist Party, has ended after only one day. Ms. Gu was accused of having poisoned a British businessman, Neil Haywood, in November of last year. A court official said that Ms. Gu did not deny the charge. An aide who acted as her accomplice was also tried. The affair caused a scandal and ended Mr. Zilai's political career. The date of the verdict has yet to be announced. Ms. Gu and her aide both face the death penalty. A government panel investigating the violence that followed the 2010 presidential election in Cote d'Ivoire has presented its report. The panel concluded that more than 3,000 people died in the crisis that began in November 2010 and ended in April 2011. Most of the victims, according to the report, were supporters of President Alassane Ouattara. The implication is that former President Laurent Gbagbo had authorized the attacks. President Ouattara reaffirmed his commitment to fight impunity. Are you thinking of financing an investment opportunity or simply a reliable banking partner? Zenit Bank Gambia offers you just that. Zenit Bank, West Africa's biggest bank and financial service consortium, puts people first through excellent services and up-to-date technology. range of banking products and services, including Western Union, REA, Money Express and MoneyGram transfer. Zenit Bank prides itself with excellent and efficient customer service delivery with branches and partners around the world. Ramadan Mubarak from Zenit Bank. Zenit Bank, a truly Gambian partner. Welcome. You need to not send for Gamsel. We now join the central forecast office for a look at the day's weather report. source assures us of a continuous flow, and from there, everything follows. And for those of us who know what the River Gambia stands for, understanding its sustainability in all aspects of life is easily confirmed. The River Gambia provides nutritious delicacies as food, while it provides its wildlife a balanced ecosystem. This river, as a sanctuary, is committed to its inhabitants' needs without season, and as you travel along, all these values are replicated in one company, Elton. Just like the River Gambia leads in its commitment to values that matter most. Elton, championing the vision for a new generation. Hello there, wonderful viewers. Welcome to the weather segment. We begin with the summary. We experience a variably cloudy and breezy atmosphere across the country today, and we now take a look at the satellite image to know what prevailed over the rest of Africa. It indicates thunder clouds over Nigeria, the central and the eastern part. Elsewhere indicated clear skies and stable conditions. For the forecast tonight, we'll be expecting a mostly cloudy atmosphere and breezy atmosphere to prevail over the entire country, with chances of rain showers to prevail over places. The day tomorrow, we'll be expecting a warm, humid, and mostly cloudy atmosphere to prevail over the entire country, 
with chances of occasional rain to prevail during the period. Gentle to moderate, not 